So we've just wrapped up the fifth week of the NFL season. I think it's a good time now for us to take a look at some early evaluations. We have enough of a sample size on most teams to make some assessments. And today we're going to do that with somebody who I know loves the sport of football and was kind enough to join me in studio. He is the host of the Zach Gelb Show on CBS Sports Radio, V1 and only Zach Gelb. What's going on, man? Dexter, doing great. How are you, my man? Well, good. I'm glad to have you here. We're going to talk some football. You are, you're a big football fan. How are you enjoying the NFL season thus far? I wish we had some better games so far through the first five <laughs> weeks of the season. Uh, the quality of play on the football field has uh, been very low. But as the season goes on, it always finds a way to play itself out, and we end up walking away from the season saying, I lost this bet, or this team's <laughs> great, this quarterback stinks, and we all have fun with it. Well, that's what we're going to talk about here today, like which teams are good, which teams are not. So we've got to start off with the New York teams, okay? We've got the They're two and three. not good, just let it Oh, go. man, he said it already. Sorry. We've, got, <laughs> we've got the two and three Jets. We've got the one and four Giants. And, Zach, things have not looked great for both teams. What is the state of New York football right now? And do either of these fan bases have reasons to be optimistic? The Jets have hope because Aaron Rodgers comes back next year. And I really do believe Rodgers is going to come back, have a phenomenal season, even though there's some mental recovery that you have to go through after suffering an injury like that. And I really do believe Rodgers win comeback player of the year next year in the NFL. However, for the Giants, uh, there's not a lot of room for hope. I, I thought going into the season, that the Giants were going to regress. I didn't know that they were going to face plant, and the Giants are in the process of face planting right now where they're going to have a top five, top ten pick in the draft, and even though they just paid Daniel Jones, there's going to be discussions about drafting a quarterback this year come April. I was literally just having a conversation with somebody about that, and what happens if the Giants get even, let's say, as high as the number one pick in the draft? Do they you take Caleb, Caleb Williams, I, yes. I'm with you on that. You I, I'll, I'll personally, for okay. Joe Shane, run the card to the podium <laughs> for him to, to, to select Caleb Williams out of USC. So you take Caleb Williams, you deal with the other stuff later, you do that. Now, for other people, Sunday Night Football, Week 5, we just saw the Niners beat the brakes off of the Dallas Cowboys. They did whatever they wanted in that game, Zach. Is San Francisco the best team in football right now? Personally, I still have the Eagles, but you're splitting hairs between the two teams. The Niners, though, are forced to be reckoned with, and Brock Purdy is really playing some good football right now and showing last year was not just five to seven games of him just kind of being Cinderella, being Mr. Irrelevant. But really, uh, I look at Jalen Hurts and the Eagles. I don't even think they played their best brands of football yet. And they're coming off a Super Bowl loss, and they're still undefeated. We're on a collision course. They play each other later in the year. Yep. But NFC title game once again in either South Philadelphia or Santa Clara. And the winner of that game will go to the Super Bowl. All right, so you definitely got those as the two best teams in the NFC. Let's keep it in NFC. The Lions, they're 4-1. Offense looks really exciting right now. I'm not even sure, Zach, that Detroit fans know what to do with this early season success because we haven't seen this around the Lions in a while. Do you think the Lions are legit? And what do you think they realistically can accomplish this year? The NFC North is already over. So pop the champagne, Lions fans. You've won the division for the first time since 1993. But it's bigger than that. They now need to go win a playoff game, which they have not done, Dexter, since 1991. They're more than capable of doing so. And you look at the NFC. We know Eagles, 49ers, whoever you want, they're the, the two best teams in the NFC. The question becomes, who's the third best team in the NFC? It's not the Dallas Cowboys because Dak Prescott's not going to get the job done in a big moment. So I look to teams like Seattle and Detroit, who already played this year, and Seattle got a victory. One of those two teams at the end of the year – I will say it come playoff time will be the third best team in the Seattle NFC. Seattle and Detroit over the Cowboys. You know, you just hurt the feelings of my producer, Brian. He's a big Cowboys fan. Well, Brian, I'm just here to be realistic. That. He's not happy about this. This team, the Dallas Cowboys, are just a good team. They're not a great team. And here's my problem. Dak Prescott is the quarterback of your team. Dak's a really good quarterback, but he's not a great quarterback. And you have an organization that's been stuck on being a really good organization ever since they last got to the Super Bowl and last won it in 1995, and they have not been back to an NFC title game since then. I know Dak Prescott's contract's up after the 2024 season. I think you need a new quarterback, and you need to get a great quarterback to just uplift that entire organization that's stuck 
in the good, not great category. Oh, Cowboys fans. Not How about them, Cowboys, Dexter? Yeah, well, not good after Sunday night. Not what we 42 saw to 10. That's 42. embarrassing. And they regressed from the last two times they played the 49ers where they were close games. And, oh, yeah, by the way, the drama Dallas choking Cowboys in both those games were the drama Dallas choking Cowboys where they couldn't get the ball snapped two years ago. And last year, championship effort on defense, but Dak interception fumble after losing Tony Pollard. See, we weren't even supposed to talk about the Cowboys and we ended up talking about the Cowboys. Here we, here we go. It's all good. Welcome to television. Welcome to television. <laughs> Eagles, like the Niners, you just mentioned, also undefeated. Um, they've had a couple of games that you mentioned. They haven't played that great. They could have lost, but they escaped with wins. They're the defending NFC championship champions. Excuse me. Do you put them in the same class as the Niners? You said you got them a little bit over. Is how much are you looking forward to that matchup in December and then possibly down the road in the NFC Championship against what you're saying are the two best teams in the conference? Well, I'm looking forward to it a lot because Debo Samuel hung up on me in an interview this year, and 40 Winers fans have been all in my mentions. 40 so Winers. I'm looking forward to that game. I lived in Philadelphia for seven years. I'm not an Eagles fan, but I will ride with the Eagles until I'm proven to be wrong. But I look at Philadelphia, best offensive line in football. You have Jalen Hurts that the last two years has displayed he could be a franchise quarterback. You have A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, a lethal one-two punch. DeAndre Swift has been really good at the running back position. And this defense just has dog after dog after dog. With Hassan Redick, who I went to college with, Brandon Graham, Jalen Carter, Fletcher Cox. The list just goes on and on and on with really good players on this team. And remember, they lost both their offensive and defensive coordinators. So there's an adjustment period when you have new voices, even though some of them have been with the team in bigger positions of power. They're still undefeated. Like, we're nitpicking the Eagles. Oh, they're winning, but they're not winning with style points. When have style points ever mattered? in the National Football League. Yeah, but it's about getting those dubs, and they've been doing that, and that's all that matters. I want to go to the AFC. Got to talk about the Dolphins, right? Talking about the offense, it's fun to watch. Definitely the Dolphins, but a lot of people like what they're seeing from them. How do you think they stack up among the best teams in the American Football Conference, in the AFC, and do you view them as legit Super Bowl contenders? I picked the Dolphins before they went of the year to win the AFC East. Now, I talk about splitting hairs between the Eagles and 49ers. You were splitting hairs before the start of the season with the Bills, the Jets, and the Miami Dolphins. So this is not, oh, look at Zach Gelb. Zach Gelb was right on, on one of these things because that division is far from over, and the Dolphins just got blown out two weeks ago against the Buffalo Bills. They have the offense. We know as long as Tua Tunga by Lois stays healthy, Tyreek Hill's going to eat. You're going to have Jalen Waddle feasting. They just got uh, Chase Claypool as well. He has to get his head uh, screwed on straight, and he needs to be a team player. And if you can't get with the Dolphins, they'll just kick you out. But there's so many weapons here in Miami. And even though Mike McDaniel sometimes creeps me out with the way that he speaks at the podium and I feel like I'm never in on the inside joke the guy's been a really good football coach through his first two years in the NFL the biggest key is the consistency on defense Jalen Phillips has been injured for this team they need him back and they need him to produce because he's one of the more underrated defensive players in football yeah how they are defensively I think is going to matter for a lot for them in terms of watching them go down the stretch but they're definitely a force to be reckoned with in the AFC North Got the Ravens, Steelers, they're tied atop the AFC North right now. Joe Burrow looks like he's starting to get a bit healthy and find his groove in Cincy. Who's the best team in the AFC North right now? <sighs> this is the toughest question, I think, in football right now. Good one. Because yeah. your Steelers are 3-2, yeah. and two, and they just won a game that they had no business in winning. I want to say it's the Baltimore Ravens, but they're always decimated with injuries, and Lamar Jackson just can't throw that interception Third and goal at the five. They started first and goal at the seven. You have to get a touchdown in that game. Rashad Bateman has to catch the football. You have to have the connection going well with uh, Mark Andrews and Lamar Jackson, where there should have been a touchdown there. He was at plus 240. It may or may not have had a few dollars on that, and it did not hit uh, because they couldn't get the connection going. I'll hold my nose on this one. I'll say it's the Ravens. I'm just not ready to go all back in on the Cincinnati Bengals. It should be the Bengals, but their next three weeks, they have three tough games. There's a bye week as well. They're two and three. They play Seattle. They play San Francisco. They play Buffalo. Let's see in three weeks where they stand, and if they're still in striking distance, then we may go back, depending on the health of Joe Burrow. And we know Jamar Chase is always open, finally gets to the end zone three times this year. It may end up being Cincinnati, but for now, I will say it's the Baltimore Ravens. He did not mention the Steelers at all. Notice what he did. Oh, great defense. He mentioned the Steelers there. Gr great defense, <laughs> but the offense, please. Nah, the off now, can Matt Canada nah. show a little emotion, don't, too? Don't uh, Pickett finally hits Pickens, and he's sitting there um, in, in the offensive coordinator box, and he's just stoked. He he's just like sitting he there with no reaction. Bothered. He looked like he couldn't be bothered to be there. Yeah, we're not even going to get into that. There's, there's a lot I can get into there. I want to talk to you about the Chiefs. We go out to the AFC West because they lost the opener in the season. 
start the season, they lost, and the people were saying, oh, what's going on with the Chiefs? But they've been fine. They've won four in a row now. They're looking good. They're right where we thought they'd be at the top of the AFC West. Are we sleeping on the Chiefs, and do you think they're a team that can repeat as Super Bowl champions? So I was in the penthouse for 20 years as a Patriot fan, and I've seen this script multiple times. I know whatever people say is the best team or the team that's been the team that everyone's hunting, they're vulnerable, they could be beat, what usually happens. As long as 15 stays healthy, as long as 87 stays healthy, and Mahomes and Travis Kelsey, and you have all these teams in the AFC that we have a lot of questions about, including Kansas City, I think Kansas City will once again go to the Super Bowl and we'll see if they get the job done against the 49ers and the Eagles because they're vulnerable. People are tugging on Superman's cape, but right now no one's been able to take that cape off and say that they're the new Superman of the AFC. There you go. Patrick Mahomes is still Patrick Mahomes, no doubt about that. Okay. And you got the Taylor Swift connection oh, to see, the Swifties in the building. See, We I could finally get her maybe to the Super Bowl. <sighs> she won't do the halftime show, but she could be sitting next to Donna Kelsey and they could be having a fiesta. I thought that you, I was about to give you a lot of credit, Zach. I thought you were going to be able to talk about the Chiefs and not mention Swift or the Swifties. I thought you could do it. Um, I'm, I'm in the media, Dexter. You know that, right? I know. It's, it's death taxes and talking about Taylor Swift these days. Yeah, apparently these days. Yeah, I see that. I see that for sure. I see that for sure. But Travis that? Kelsey looking like he's feeling a little well, 22. The mention there is going to make my other producer, Emma Kate. She'll be happy about that. Yeah. She's a Swiftie. She'll be happy. Can we get some that. tickets, by the way, too, for the next concert? We, we, need, we need that. We definitely need You that. and I had a Taylor Swift concert. It would be very interesting. It would be. It would be interesting. <laughs> All right, last, last thing before I get you out of here, because we evaluated some of the best teams in the sport and we talked about some of the contenders. But we got some of the worst teams to talk about, right? You got the Giants, Patriots, Bears, Broncos, Panthers. Who's likely to be the winner of the Caleb Williams sweepstakes come the spring? Who do you think is the worst team in football right now? Well, the answer to that question, it's the Chicago Bears. But yes. it doesn't mean the Chicago Bears are the worst team in football because it's the Carolina Panthers. And the Panthers traded away... Mm -hmm. Uh, that number one pick to go get Bryce Young, and they're going to be the worst team in football. Their offensive line stinks. They have no weapons for Bryce Young. They have Miles Sanders, one of the most overrated running backs in the NFL, and that defense is solid. But as we see here in New York, when you have a solid defense and they're not the Jets defensively, it can only go so far when you don't have enough on the offensive side of the ball. So the Panthers are going to be the worst team in the league, and David Tepper is a joke as an owner. That's a topic for another day. And they're not even going to get the number one overall pick because it's going to go to Chicago. Well, they'll draft Caleb Bulliams, and then someone will get to uh, try to fix Justin Fields, who I do think is better than the way that he's been playing so far in the NFL. I agree with you on that. Interesting. Bears do control the draft in that standpoint where Chicago, excuse me, Car Charlotte, excuse me, Carolina, apologize, they have the worst record right now in football at 0 5. It's fun talking some football with you. Always blast. Thanks for having me. No, I appreciate it. That is Zach Gelb, host of the Zach Gelb Show on CBS Sports Radio. Check that out. Go give him a follow as well. Zach, we'll have to do this again, man. Anytime. Thanks so much. Thank you.